I'm talking to you from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, um, and today is October 8th, 2011. The date's important for reasons that we'll see in a little while. Uh, behind me you can see the waters of the Tonle Sap River. Uh, Phnom Penh lies at the confluence of the Tonle Sap um, and the uh, Mekong uh, over to that, in that direction. Uh, the reason that the date's important is that this is the end of the rainy season and the Tonle Sap and Mekong rivers um, are, at, are at very high levels. Um, not as quite as high as they were about a week ago um, when they came close to flooding the streets of, of Phnom Penh. Uh, but the waters are still pretty high anyway. Uh, further upstream, the flooding has been unusual uh, this year. In fact, I have here a copy of today's Cambodia Daily um, and there is a story on the front page about flooding uh, in, uh, uh, in part of the, of, of the country. Now, floods are an important and indeed vital part um, of life in Cambodia. Uh, and the reason for this is that much of Cambodia is flat, uh, relatively flat. The staple crop here is rice, and rice needs lots of water during its, during its growing season. Uh, but if rice is important in the diet of Cambodians, perhaps fish um, is at least as important. Uh, more than 50% of the protein intake of Cambodian people comes from fish, and those fish come from the Tonle Sap River, the Mekong River, um, and up in a northerly direction that way, the Tonle Sap Lake. Now, the, the Tonle Sap Lake is a very fascinating and unusual place. Um, it's Cambodia's great lake, um, and it alone is responsible for most of the fish that, uh, that, that, that Cambodian people eat. But the Tonle Sap Lake and the river that you see behind me um, are no ordinary lake and river. Uh, you'll notice that uh, from the plants behind me floating down the, the river, um, that the river is now flowing in a southerly direction. Well, today's Saturday. Um, if I'd been here last Saturday, uh, the plants and the river would have been flowing in the opposite direction. Uh, sometime over the last weekend, the rivers, the, the Tonle Sap River reversed direction and started flowing south instead of north. Um, this happens every year um, and is part of the uh, unique ecosystem that makes Tonle Sap so productive. Um, the reason for this reversal in direction um, is that during the rainy season, um, and much of the rain in, in Southeast Asia is monsoonal, during the rainy season not only here, um, but uh, upstream the catchment area of the, of the Mekong River. Um, when rains fall in that area, the river, the Mekong River, rises to such an extent um, that um, it starts to flow into the Tonle Sap rather than the Tonle Sap flowing into it. Uh, the result is that during the wet season, the waters of the Tonle Sap Lake uh, rise uh, sometimes by up to 10 meters. And the area of the lake increases fivefold. Uh, so this is a, uh, a very unusual uh, hydrological system um, and one, as I've said, that's very, very important to Cambodia. Uh, the Mekong River system, though, is not only important to Cambodia, um, it's vital to the southern part of Vietnam. Uh, the Mekong Delta region is uh, one of the world's most productive rice-growing regions. Uh, the Mekong River, the Mekong River system, uh, is more productive in terms of fish than the Amazon, um, than the Mississippi, um, and more productive than the Yangtze River in, in China. Uh, now, this means that, uh, well, a lot of people 
rely on the on the river for their for their livelihood, um, and this is a cause for great concern because uh, at the moment there are plans afoot to build several dams on the on the Mekong River. Uh, most recently, a dam uh, a project was announced um, in Laos um, that would provide electricity to to Thailand. And this is causing great concern because of the potential impact of the hydroelectric uh, dam on the uh, on, on, on uh, fish populations in the river. Uh, the impact of this dam is really is really unknown. Um, so this is a, a vital ecosystem, uh, an important ecosystem, um, and a fascinating one.